So we've got two reefs in the Jenny, three in the main, 30 knots of wind. What's our speed over ground? Well, it was seven. Um, Loch Aileen. Uh, we had a lovely evening because um, we met up with some people who we first met up with two years ago at Tavelick. We did see um, them a couple of weeks ago in Oban. We did. <laughs> two weeks ago in Oban but again now at this anchorage. But it's really nice meeting up with people and chatting to people. Part of this um, blog is about basically us introducing ourselves to other people so if you ever see us uh then do give us a shout and um we'll hopefully either sit you come over to ours or you we go over to yours we're happy either way okay so what's going on then uh well nothing much we're back in um uh, Loch Aileen and we've anchored this time uh but patch has reminded me that i need a patch on Just my a cell of pets so, thank you, Patch. Look at him. So, I'm going to sort of sort out my patch and then I'll see what other things need mending on the boat. So, probably time to get another tuck in, is it? Yep. Okay. Stay short tucks, you're exercising plenty, Ben. Well, you're looking very fetching in your um, mullions. I have to be because it's a it's a short tack day. And it's a cold one. It's a cold one and I'm on helm today. Um, but um, yeah, we're going to be doing short tacks up the, up the sound. Just notice the Lockheed Lean Ferry over your shoulder, by the way. Yeah, well, I'm not worrying about it. <laughs> but yeah, short tacks. So Beverly have lots to keep her exercised with. So, and there's some great weather up there in the distance, isn't there? Way up over that way. Yeah. So we've got two reefs in the Jenny, three in the main, 30 knots of wind. What's our speed over ground? Well, it was seven. Now I've dropped to 6.3. Seven knots down to 6.3. Yeah. It's just about that kind of variable day. Six and a half, six point six. I think we've got enough in our hands. Back yeah. back to sailing, less video, what do you think? Yeah, definitely a lot more sailing. Change the plan then. Ah, oh, you know us and our plans. Oh no, um, the wind was getting up to a four six, and I was making progress uh, up the loch. I think thirty two knots is a bit more than four six. <laughs> well, anyway, I was making progress up the loch, um, but the thing is, you've got to look at the course made good, and um, because we were tacking. A lot, you know, our actual distance was quite a lot, considering um, in comparison to how far we were going. So I've just decided I'm on the helm today. So I decided I'm going to go and say hello to Loch Aileen again. I think we'll take a pontoon tonight. Get, uh, get some showers. Get some showers, stuff like that. But. Uh, It is. Uh, you're right, it is a wee bit swelly. But, you know, I've set the one cell that we need to set. So, Beverly, 
heavily. I believe we're still in a 4.6. Uh, yeah, the forecast today was um, gusting to 4.6. Um, we currently, give me two seconds. Yeah, it's showing 4.6. Um, but it's a different four, sort of 4.6 from the last one we had. Last time we were doing 5 to 7 knots into a 4.6, so our speed was added to the wind speed and it made it feel like a 7, maybe even an 8. Uh, this time we have it coming from that direction, just over the, the uh, starboard quarter. So our speed, which is six knots, is subtracted from the force six and turns it into about a force four or a force five. So by running with it, we've turned out like a force seven slash eight and yes, force four slash five. I mean, it's a difference of at least two forces, maybe as much as four. So it's a fairly straightforward run. Um, rather than put the main up and have it jive because the wind's getting behind it, we've just put the Jenny up with two reefs in and we're doing six knots. Why would we want to go any faster? Six mm. knots is a good speed, it's a sailboat. Uh, if I wanted to go quicker, I'd have, I'd have bought a speedboat. So we're happy with this. It's a little bit rolly like all downwinds, but it's not unpleasant. Wind's gusting a little bit, sea's a little lumpy. We're going to go into Tobermory, get some diesel in a jerry can for going out into the Hebrides where the supplies are rather hard to come by and we're just going to see how it works out but we're glad we came out today we did talk to a couple of subscribers we bumped into a lock alien and they were contemplating coming on this journey today and they think maybe they could have done but they were a little unhappy with the thought of the four six and you know what you've got to do what's the right thing for you and your boat and your crew we're comfortable today we're happy this is much more comfortable than what we had a couple of days ago yeah but like you say it's all about because we're going away from it that's the big difference that's it? the huge difference we're not punching into this we're not having the bow bury into waves we don't have wind over tide either which is another factor when we were doing this the other day we had wind over tide because the wind was going that way and the tide was going that way today we have them both going that way which also gives us a little additional speed Tobermory because um, we needed to fill up with get some extra diesel uh, we've been advised that um, in the Outer Hebrides diesel can be a little bit hard to come by and if you're on mooring balls or anchoring well, <laughs> it's a bit of a walk to the shop let's put it that way so um, we've done that we've got some shopping uh, we've got a few other bits and bobs, uh, but we're going to move on to a mooring ball. <sighs> so I see you're doing the chart again, not the, the log again. Yeah, just getting things ready. Um, the thing about being in a place like this is we stick with paper and we've got the tide book and the rest of it so I've, I've put I've transferred all the tidal stuff from the tide book that we got into this we've got the weather forecast off um, VHF uh, and the reason that we do all this is because although we like apps and although we're computer people we can't depend on apps all the time this place we're in is got a town a couple hundred meters that way not very far but we're round a point we've got no phone signal here we've got no wi-fi signal here all my apps are dead, none of them work. Um, doesn't help that I dropped my phone the other day and cracked the screen, so that's not very good either. So we're always concerned, what what if the phone went overboard and all my sailing plan was on, on the phone? So with paper, it stays here on the chart table, it never leaves. We've got no reason ever to take this off the boat. Um, it doesn't crack, it doesn't bend, it doesn't shatter, and it never ever runs out of batteries. The downsides of this lot is you have to pay money for the tide tables. We paid £17 for, them for a year's tide tables. You've got to pay money for a chart and you've got to pay money for a pilotage. But 
I would have the pilot age whether it had apps or not because it is so useful. Um, the chart, it's not a big expense, 20 quid. Um, none of these apps come free, well some of them do come free, but most of them you wind up paying a fee for and I guess that fee will pay for one or two charts each year or it will pay for reads tie tables each year. So I don't see them really losing anything. Um, I've got the advantage that this always works. I can't be cut off from it ever. So yeah, because where we are, you can get some Wi-Fi, if, but yeah. you have to go up on deck. And you have to wait for the boat to swing the right way mm. for enough of it to get view around the point of the time. Mm. And then, yeah, you can pick up a very, very weak signal. And if it's chucking rain down up there, I have to stand up there and get wet. Mm. So um, I'm just putting my own position. I'm speaking for myself. I'm not saying that everybody should do what I do, but in the areas we sail, we do not feel confident depending purely on apps. They are lovely and we like using them, but our 100% guaranteed backup way of working is the paper. So, the, the hazards of fishermen dropping pots in odd places. Um, it's not only um, fishermen dropping pots. Um, there's a whole host of uh, variety of things. Um, so, uh, we came onto this uh, mooring here at uh, Dover Mooring. But uh, we had to pull the chain all onto the deck just to reduce uh, the swinging circle because I've got um, uh, another mooring over there. I've got a little small boat uh, on its mooring here and I've also got um, a marker um, just to sort of like show you where the... Um, Fishing the, pots. <laughs> the, yeah, we've got fishing pots, but that black one is actually a depth uh, marker. Yeah. But it's just sort of like you've got all these little things and we had to, as I say, reduce our turning circle <laughs> because otherwise we were going to be hitting any one of these uh, obstacles. Uh, but at the moment um, in Tobermory, a couple of the mooring balls have actually been picked up and moved um, by boats that were just far too heavy. So you've got to make sure that you're on one. Uh, that doesn't say no mooring all over it. Uh, they will be sorting it out. Um, but as you can imagine, it takes a lot of people to actually put the moorings back in, into the right place. So you just have to be careful which ones you choose. They have written clearly on the pickup boys. They, they are written clearly on the pickup boys. And the one that I was going to go to initially was like, no, not happening. I have to say, it looks rather moody. Yeah, but, um, yeah, we're sailing in the mist, as we call it. Or at least most sailing, but what the heck. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Arden American Point and the Arden American Rap. Arden, Arden, ooh, 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 Arden. That's not right, is it? No, it is not. You had it much better before. Zark, like, what would it be? Sort of like Arden, 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 Point, Arden, Mucking. That's like football <laughs> chance. Yeah. No, no, what rap sure you be along the lines of Yo, it's Arden, Mucking, and I took my car up to it. And